Welcome back, everyone, as we head our way into Brazil. My name is Gore Meiser, and joining me through this set is going to be Kresnik, who's going to be over there, not behind the camera this time around. And Kresnik, uh, we're going to get to watch Parallax Gaming, so some guys that you've gotten to coach over in the past as well, being, being one of the most dominant forces in Brazil. I think I'm excited for this one. I think everybody should be. Oh, yeah, for sure, especially with Fatal Ambition, I think. Looking stronger in some of the previous weeks, but Parallax is, is, is a monster. Uh, after in control maybe looked like they could have taken them down last week and parallax just 12 owed swiftly in response saying no fatal ambition i think even with the improvements have a long road ahead of them if they want to to take down parallax here seems to be the conversation in a lot of the regions it was originally that way with district 69 but parallax well, they haven't had the roster changes that D69 has in Europe. So mm -hmm. they're 7-1. and one. They lost once, as you had mentioned, to In Control Nation that one time. And other than that, they've been pretty dominant over teams like Carnage Gaming. And so it's going to be difficult for Fatal Ambition to, to be able to come out on top here. But what kind of... This is the, the hardest question because I actually don't know the answer. I'm, I won't be surprised if you don't have an answer for it. Is there a weakness in Parallax Gaming to take down, or is it something that you just have to catch them on an off day to, to make things go right? I don't know if there's necessarily a, a weakness. I mean, it seems to be Io. Look at last week in Control, yeah. win two games with Io. Suddenly Io is banned, they lose three straight. Maybe pick Io against them. At this point, they're not going to let that through. Uh, Fatal Ambition, I think, might have a chance to exploit a, a potential draft weakness, though. Having this hybrid console PC team makes it very hard to draft against. Mm -hmm. You really can't ban out anybody. On, on their team, I feel. So maybe the draft's a little bit harder for Parallax, but they're, they're so flexible too. I think it's going to come down to if Fatal Ambition can get and abuse this IO to make Parallax uncomfortable. I'll well, we'll have to see if she comes through. She had one of the highest win rates in Brazil for weeks at a time. I still think she's in like the top five, but it's fallen down from good graces. But to see who's going to be there, we'll have to see where we will be going. Ice Mine, Stone Keep, Ascension Peak, Frog Isle, all notably banned out. Bizarre not, so I always have my high hopes set on Bizarre potentially coming through. But Jag Falls will be map numero uno here as we go in Brazil. Spree in Portuguese. I don't know Portuguese, so I can't say number one in Portuguese for you, but Jag Falls is the map where anything can happen. I actually fully expected you to say, all right, no, I can't say it, but Kresnik can because or you, Kresnik I, I, I might was, be I was, able to. I can't, I can't. I was expecting it and I was figuring out how to let you down as gently as possible. <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of surprised that Parallax are getting rid of Stone Keep though. I, I feel like they would be confident playing into this team, but the, it, it kind of is this the skill test map. I feel like that'd be a map you'd want to go to, but Jaguar... I'd say it, it's kind of about the same there. They can play their blasters here yeah. that they can put FRZ there. Mitau, maybe they'll just have him play Strix three times in a row, uh, like he did five times in a row last week. We'll see what they want to do on this map. But this is a map where they can kind of awaken Freeze, and Fatal know that, and that's why they're getting rid of this EV as early as possible. Yeah, I'm trying to think of who I'm more scared of on this map. Freeze God's Bomb King or Vindo's Bomb King. Both of them have been players that love picking it up. And I think either one is likely to pull it out, although I wouldn't be surprised to see Parallax pull that just to maybe put a full stop on a Fatal Ambition. But as of now, it has been the Vivian, which is a shot at not PS1 and headed. Eevee, like you said, a shot there against Freeze. The Rom, who has been... In Brazil, he is still one of the top bands. He is still one of those guys that comes through. A lot of the other regions have kind of forgotten him. And then Moji, which maybe you want to look at it as a Jag Falls thing. Maybe you want to look at it as a Fatal Ambition thing. But either way, she's out of there. Yeah, we've seen a little bit from Fatal. So Parallax doing doing their homework, taking him out. But getting Bomb King for themselves, not only taking it away from Vindo, but giving it to Freeze, which we know how much of an impact player he can be. This does leave Io open with Rom being banned by Fatal instead, so I wouldn't be shocked to see them pick up this Talus and the Io. Uh, Talus is also a great target for the Io's healing. Give him the speed boost, give him the damage reduction, and make this pretty effective dive already even better. He can live even longer and get the most mileage out of his rune as he possibly can. And I think Talus, it's one of those interesting picks because he's only really showing up here in Brazil. So he has that little bit of flavor that, well, so far only these teams have been able to pull out and work. And mm -hmm. my question, originally I was going to say some good fun things about me being on this side of the screen instead of that side so that I can make you talk about IO instead of me going on and on about it. But realistically, I actually want to go back to the history that I've seen out of Parallax, specifically Freeze God letting Mittal play things like the EV and the Bomb King, like the blasters that would normally be reserved for him in the matchups that they think they're going to win anyway. 
And then, you know, like last week we saw them go up against Carnage Gaming and Freeze grabbed his picks, the ones we know he plays. Yeah. So do you think there's room for them to flex this on the mid tower or is this going to be like a Freeze God through and through? If they are, I wouldn't expect them to do it game one. I think they're going to kind of test the waters, see, see the temperature, dip their toe in, say if they stomp them, then I think maybe they, they'll be willing to do it. But I, I honestly wouldn't expect that. Fatal, I think, is going to put up a great fight. Their comp is looking solid so far. This Tyra will be able to withstand... The aggression pretty effectively too, this mercy kill damage reduction. If this Ash and Maeve dive onto her, she's not really the most viable target. But the longer the fights go, now with this Ying pickup from Parallax, the life exchange healing, the illusory rift, I'm not sure if, if they want the fight to go long, if they want to survive the dive, or if they just want to get aggressive themselves on the side of Fatal Ambition. Well, they're going to have to be very careful. Talus is in. That can get really aggressive really quickly, and Maeve yeah. might be able to lock it down a little bit, but... Well, we'll have to see how exactly that comes through. The IO is, is the one that's kind of the, the coin flip. Parallax Gaming haven't had the best track record against her, but I see IO, I see Barrack, I think Bulldozer, and theoretically that should be enough to help you get a little bit of control, right? Yeah, for sure. Put, get, put it on that Inara, put it on that Bomb King, especially since we're going to Jaguar Falls. Control those rooms next to the point, and you can burn Luna down if they put it at a bad time. It, it could flip easily against Fatal Ambition, because Io's healing, it's good, but it's still single target, no matter how hard you try to spread it. Well, we'll have to see how well they handle it this time around. I think the history you mentioned is probably better than anything. Two games last week that Parallax Gaming lose, it's against this Io, Goddess's Blessing, that 15% damage reduction. It's a big talent to overcome, and... Well, they have not too much to do it, but Ying brings a lot to the fight, and Nara's her own healing sponge, but there's the two bulldozers immediately. Not maybe <laughs> where you expected to see them, but it is on the Inara, as you had mentioned. Also on the Ying this time around, as the fight starts out around Statue. Palm King, already good damage here for Freeze God. That's going to be first blood. Yeah, it was a great great survival there, too, by the Tyra, but Vindo in the back, coming in, takes down two, and following up onto Outlander's PS1. Parallax lost this fight early, but I don't think they're going to be able to chase down Dintic, keeping Parallax kind of in this fight. And they're going to be able to stagger out Kranz there, take control over the objective. Luna eventually will come up, sit down. Uh, now the death, death grip begins. 57 now to 33% on the other side, but looking for the way to fight back in here. It looks like Freeze God going statue side along with Mittal on this Maeve, looking for the kills. And that's going to be Vindo. It's going to be headed, taken off of the board. They're going to get aggressive in here. There's no one standing on the point just now. It's going to be Freeze God instead looking for the next blood, and lo and behold, it's going to be onto that Aya. And aggression from the back. I'm glad that they're, they're, they're staying spread, didn't take a little bit closer, and the rest of the team's covering the rest of the map. That's what they were really missing. Their earlier made it too easy to wrap, and now they're collapsing on the back line of Fatal Ambition Gore. Uh, it's going to be a double kill for Mittau as he locks him down there. Point number one should be going to Parallax. Unless someone on Fatal Ambition has some shenanigans. But with Zen off the board, doesn't seem like anyone's going to be prepared in any way to try and control this. Mattel loses a little bit of a trade there. Maybe not exactly what he wanted going into the beginning of the push. But Midnight's available. King Bomb's at 82%. So ults are going to be coming online here soon as the well, remaining two minutes of this start to tick down for Fatal Ambition. I love this aggression from Dintic right now under Secret, isolating out the Tyra and the rest of the team thought they could get aggressive, didn't realize Dintic was there, and suddenly an opening to execute as Freeze takes down that Tyra as well. The whole team gets split and, and Parallax are just collapsing. Yeah, Freeze God doesn't seem to have too many issues playing Bomb King as it turns out. And well, he is very <laughs> comfortably aggressive on this. I think they've figured out the IO problem, at least as of right now, Cool has not had an instant to himself just a minute where he's been able to sit and be relaxed there's the sir dominance over on the side king bomb charged and ready but a minute and a half on the clock they might not need to use any of these ults they still have control they're gonna charge it up anyway they're gonna be rolling forward here trying to seal the deal and it's gonna be right onto the barrack it's gonna be one more kill unless it gets blocked out there he's gonna be able to stay alive just a little bit longer the dash is keeping him going and that's gonna be a kill on the barano but you lose dittick and freeze god in the process that loses you a lot of your control yeah, that's that's the power of Io's healing. When you are only focusing one target, if the healing's there, you're never going to take him down. So much burst healing plus that damage reduction. Barrack just withstood all of that. And now Parallax, they have to sit back and figure out how they want to retake this if they're willing to spend ultimates. 
They have this initial point, so they should be. They can't lose even if it snowballs the other way for the next round. So I'd expect to see this Illusory Rift and the Seismic Crash coming out if they manage to take some room. Mercy is ahead of his tanks, though, so Fatal Ambition have a chance to pounce. Not fast enough. We'll give them time to set up. It looks like they've already split the team a little bit in half. It's weird to think that Freeze God used a King Bomb, didn't get a kill with it, but now he's looking for that aggression elsewhere. It's going to be a lot of damage once again on the Bear now. I mean, though... Trying to just ward him off, but Zin can only survive so long. He's gonna be forced to fall back here, but that does not seem enough. Freeze God's going forward, locking him in the base. And hey, if the healing was the problem last time, lock cool away. Let somebody else get the kill this time around. Seems to be the call for them. Six seconds left on the clock before they go into overtime. That spike gonna Bingo. miss, go right into the wall there. So no clean kills off of that. There's the crossfire coming out to get the damage down. Headed gonna get a kill. Vindo going to tick up a few more. So they still melt down everyone on Parallax. Headed closes it off with a triple kill, but it maybe costs them a lot to get there. I mean, that's three ultimates gone on the side of Fatal Ambition. Yeah, I, it was worth it, I think, to hold. They have the 1-1, one, one. and just like I said, if you get the defense, now it's not going to snowball the other way, even if Parallax do take the mid and win. You have another mid potentially to hold your ground. I I'm not sure how I feel about how Parallax tried to take that. They had this incredible opportunity where FRZ was in their spawn. Their, the IO literally couldn't heal. I don't think Luna was even on the map from what I saw from the click over to Barrack when he was contesting the objective. If the rest of the team had just run in, they would have had a, a pretty solid damage versus no healing fight to take, but... Held their ground a little bit too long, and Fatal Ambition were able to get Cool back out. Ultimate-wise, only Midnight up, it looks like. For Parallax, Fatal Ambition have begun in true power. Only true power can really initiate, so a lot of pressure, I think, onto Headed to, to really make room, and he's going in right now. Uh, that's going to be the aggression, his health bars kind of pivoting between low and full, but unfortunately, Vindo is the first one to go down. You don't have much coming out of the Talus. The true power goes in, but it gets forced right back out there, and unfortunately for this Tyra, she has a lot of damage reduction, it doesn't seem to be stopping too, too much from going on here. Freeze God has charged up that King Bomb. He's looking to get aggressive, but hey, it's it's 60% to 6 on the other side. And while Luna's going to be able to stand there for a little bit, it's not going to be long. It's Freeze God goes fishing, doesn't find anything, but they are able to get a huge zone. That's two more clean kills picked up, and it looks like Parallax should have this one. Yeah, because Fatal Ambition's splitting quite a bit and just letting Parallax take them out one at a time. Uh, the combined the assert dominance with FRZ rotating to the flank, just shredding through them, and now Parallax are going to get this very aggressive zone. I'm not sure where Luna's going at the start of these fights. I, I feel like it's either getting melted immediately, or it's just not going out to the objective. Since they're contesting the outside so far, I feel like they, they really need that, that contesting pressure. Deny Parallax that 50%, so that even if Fatal Ambition do win that fight, they can deny a, a retake, or at least have a chance to do a retake later. Parallax very aggressive, and the healing not really there, it looks like, for Fatal Ambition. Especially now, with Io going down. I think we've seen what the answer was from Parallax, and it's Anara with the full bulldozer. Tends to help out so far, and where they've kind of faltered every single time. 45 seconds of solid push, now they're entering the last minute and 40, but that, this 80% mark is where things have slowed down for them. Doesn't look like it's going too well. Crossfire comes out. No dome shield or anything available to try and stall this. So once not PS1 goes down, the ultimate taken away from him. The kill's still coming up blue. And Mittal maintaining this pressure. Barano forced to charge back in. Headed gets a kill on the Outlander. And that might be the key, especially with the spine in the back. But Freeze God saves off his teammate Mittal. Still kicking. Midnight still available. They might be able to continue their pressure and push this one forward. Especially with Dintik getting passive heal in front of the entire team. Finally, they stop him from regening, but... He gets enough health back to actually survive. They have plenty of time to wait for Outlander to come back and three ultimates in their pocket if they want to use something to engage and not PS1 walled in by the aggression and they have the true power to save themselves. And already getting aggressive. I love Kronz's positioning here. A good seismic crash going into the back line. Going to look to try and stun out Cool, but he uses the ult for the CC immunity to be able to stay at least unstunned there. Unfortunately, it's not going to save his team. Freeze God picks up headed. Barano going to get taken down as well. Vindo going to be able to trade out Mittal for their troubles. That might be enough to force Parallax Gaming to fall back. Low health bars, the healing not available for them immediately. They've got 30 seconds left to figure it out. No ults to their name. Their dominance is very close. This is dangerous waters to be in. 
I, I, I just have to mention really quickly, unrelated to the push, but FRZ just juggled himself out on a bomb as he was flying away using his own <laughs> primary fire. Nobody does that, but he just managed to do it and live and got far enough away to save himself and open the door for Mitau to walk right through main. That's going to be two clean kills. Outlander gets one, Freeze God gets another. That's a full on team wipe. And while well, they're going to use a little bit of overtime timers here, but good luck getting out of these doors safely. Bomb King will plant some traps. Parallax Gaming find themselves up 3-1, and well, they seem to have found the answer to their own kryptonite that was that IO. Yeah, they're really just tearing into Luna whenever it gets placed on the objective. With the amount of damage they have, you can see what, two FRC 16 and 3. Also at the top of the damage charts, just yeah, above that PS1. Yeah, I would say, you know what, if I pick a Bomb King and I'm going 16 and 3, uh, that's I think that is worth the first pick, I would say, on, on Jaguar Falls. <laughs> I... All that Bulldozer too, having it on your point tank is great. If your point tank can deal with, with the Luna on its own, and then you make the IO have to rotate back over away from the fight to replace it, that's a chance for your team to push if you're able to move fast enough. So opportunities opened up for them because of that. Ultimates are going to get charged pretty quickly here for Parallax, and Dome Shield and Crossfire, realistically, the only response from Fatal. But now they don't start on the outside. They finally start in the middle of the map. And this is going to be a tougher push for Parallax to go into, unless this is her dominance is huge in the back. Well, so far, it's been causing a lot of trouble. Kron's didn't going to be able to pick up kills. Oh, might as well make it three. That Dome Shield goes down and is well, outlasted by everyone on Parallax Gaming. So the kills, 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 all in their favor. And unfortunately for Cool, Luna gets taken down. He gets taken down shortly thereafter. And now we're looking at a full press defense here. Try to stop him from getting back to the mid. You're already at 51%. I mean, you've got a couple ults available, but can Fatal Ambition really break through here? I, I'm not sure. They Only if they had true power, but they spent it on the defense earlier with the tank going down. It's all on this crossfire, Gore. They don't have a chance. And all spite was used. Vindo trying to close the gap as much as possible alongside the Whirl. But it's just... Not enough. King Bomb channeled in the background, just as a security measure, as well, it seems like well, Parallax didn't miss a stride throughout all of that. They seem pretty comfortable with where they're going, and they take game number one. Yeah, and a great, the great zone by them, I think, really just completely took away any chances for Fatal Ambition to get back in. Since they had the point contested the whole time and won the start of the fight so cleanly and so far forward, maybe Fatal had to be more aggressive just to at least give themselves yeah. a, a chance to get back in since they had to spend that true power a little bit earlier. I think they were just, I mean, they tried what, two, three different approaches to the mid fight. And unfortunately yeah. you only get max three that we've seen against Parallax Gaming, at least in some of these instances. So I like the fact that they tried something different, but as you mentioned, it didn't go well for them. 17, three and 13, a, a really well, stellar game, I think for anybody playing Bomb King, but for Freeze God, maybe just another day in the park for him. I mean, that seems just pretty hard for the course for when day. you give him one of his, you know, signature picks. So, I mean, is that does that come down almost entirely to just, hey, Freeze God's good at Bomb King and this is a good map for him? I think they, they had a chance to outplay it. They, they got him out at the start, but they just needed to actually change how their mids went, I think, a little bit more aggressively. They pinched FRZ and then they were able to almost win that first mid then suddenly they were a little bit more passive and let FRZ kind of sit in free fire. And you just can't do that on a Bomb King on Jaguar Falls, regardless of who's <laughs> playing it. They just control the map so much. Uh, a lot of control from Parallax, which is not something that we... Well, no, nah, uh, contrary. That is something that we've grown accustomed to from them, is a lot of control. And Well, hey, he did the best, so you can bet and you're going to be able to see a lot of it. I mean, there were so many moments where working, again, beside the, the Bomb King along with the Maeve being able to set things up, a Midnight combo setting up Bomb Ooh. King to make, move forward, or just some nice long-range daggers from Mitau to be able to get aggressive. There's so many moments that you could see where Parallax's control is born from, and it is this DPS duo. Yeah, for sure. Mitau able to get in and out, and that's the benefit of Maeve just you can kind of get away with a ton with this damage reduction, with the fact that she can reset her mobility more so than a lot of other champions. And sorry, I, I actually had to back away laughing because of not PS1 just slowly turning and seeing Mitau and realizing it was over <laughs> as, as he dove in there for the for the very end. This Bomb King Mave duo on a map like this, where there's so many corners for the Mave to escape to, and when you chase those corners, you can't possibly avoid a Bomb King bomb covering the entire choke point. It's, it's so potent, and it's perfect, I think, for what Parallax wanted to be doing. And, well, hey, 
you can't argue more than that. It was perfect for what they wanted to do. It was perfect enough to get them a win. They dropped, what, the one point in terms of a defense, but that's it there for Jaguar Falls. So Parallax kind of living up par for the course. Io last week, and I think in, in Brazil in general, has been the point of contention. She was above a 90% win rate for a long time. Then it dropped down to, like, the 70s oh, the next week. And now it's gone down into the 60s. And we're going to go to Bizarre. It's which, happening. That's a pretty big map. I mean, you get Parallax running a good Inara. You get an Io on the other side. This this is where it could work. I'm just happy to finally be going back to Bizarre. I I feel like I can't remember the last the last Bizarre game I was able to watch, but they they banned some of this more standard maps this week. So happy to be be treated to it here. Uh, Io is still great on this map, but definitely less effective I think than on some of the other maps where you're fighting off the point. Everywhere on the mid fight on Bizarre is looking. At the, at the point. You can see it from almost anywhere. The walls yep. maybe give you a moment of respite if you're holding in the under areas, but you can always shoot Luna from anywhere, and any point tank can, can make it work on this map because of all the cover. That's one of my favorite things about this map, is it does kind of translate, even though in you know Europe, even in North America to an extent, we've seen a little bit of shifting away from the point tanks, more so in Europe than in NA, but here, Brazil, they will pick up whatever like fits the needs they have. And as you mentioned here, mm -hmm. this is a good one. I think Barrick has been very big on this map, and Nara is very big on this map. And even though she's maybe a little easier to counter, Io has been huge on this map. And I like the Parallax Gaming go, okay, you know what? We beat her once. That was good. Now we're just going to ban her out to not have to deal with her to begin with. And while maybe it does limit them and, and open up some picks for Fatal Ambition, I think it helps control the pace of the game. Yeah, banning it on second pick, I think, is solid. Ban it, also, you can kind of get away with not banning Vivian on this map, because if you want to get rid of Victor, he's better at range. This map is quite open. Since it's so open, this Strix is going to be pretty tough for Parallax to deal with, I think. They're going to have to have a very mobile off-tank if they want to do this. Ash, for me, would be a great pick. Mave, we just saw it performed great by Mitau. Uh, no fall-off means he can really counter those snipers, and the damage reduction lets him actually get away if he gets caught out for an instant by Headed or not PS1. I can get us out of uh, so it's going to be oh, uh, maybe the, the push and pull. We saw earlier that Strix can absolutely win games. Maybe not on his own. I don't want to give that much credit to Prosper because there's a lot of team play that went into that. But it opens up a lot of doors that might have otherwise been closed. But Maven and Ash, a solid combination. With this map, or, especially because we just saw Parallax do it, do you... You know, want to go back to this kind of standard composition, two tanks, two DPS, one support? Or do you maybe want to mix it up and, and kind of see what do what we've been seeing in Europe, which is maybe make this Ash kind of your mainstay tank? I don't know if you want Ash solo tank on this map. I think you want someone contesting point because it's so easy to keep getting kind of sneaking cap time uh, around the walls, just kind of tiptoeing in and out. If the Ash has to get aggressive onto the Strix, which she will more like more than likely have to, I think you want someone contesting, may, even if it's a tanky flanker, you know, maybe a buck sitting on the objective. He can jump and shoot over the walls with almost no midair and accuracy. So great map for him. And we know how valued he's been in Brazil in the past. I like the idea of a buck point tank, and it kind of scares me to think that that <laughs> techni like, technically could exist. Doesn't as of right now, but there's a realm somewhere in, in, in a parallel universe where he is in control. But as of now, it's the Ying and Nara on the one side, which gives, uh, I think, a lot of solid control, healing soak up to Fatal Ambition in terms of the point. But Maldamba Barrick, one of the kind of tried and true combos that we've seen in Paladins up there. How they approach this fight, Vivian's a good counter for Barrick, but being able to shut him down is only maybe part of the problem. And Parallax Gaming left themselves open for a brilliant counter pick there at the end. Yeah, I, I'd agree. They have a chance to come out with maybe, I wouldn't say a blaster, but you can have a secondary flanker. It could be a, an Andro, even. Andro and Maeve just kind of running the map with the Ash. No matter what back line they dive, three people on one or two, hard to counter. But Fatal Ambition, they don't want that to have any potential of happening. They grab it. But that's triple hits get Inara solo tank. This Ying maybe doesn't have the protection she would have otherwise if they had gone with something more standard like a Khan. Uh, now she's going to be potentially under some trouble. Maeve can get back there. Okay. I don't want to say easily because when there's Strix and Vivian on board, it's hard to do anything as a flank. But Kinesa on the other side, so we get a little bit of a sniper battle. And this is one of those maps that 
I feel like I've seen Strix be successful when there's no sniper on the other side. I feel like I've seen Kinesa be mixed successful when there's no snipers on the other side. How do you feel about the one-on-one -on -one with the sniper battle? It's going to be tough for them to do for sure, but there's a lot of cover. This Kinesa can kite and hide away on areas that aren't the objective. And I think, honestly, Parallax might have taken this from some old PPL scrims. Na'Vi used to love Kinesa on this map in practice. Maybe they remember uh, <laughs> not performing great against it and seeing how strong it could be, <laughs> pulling it back out here on Bizarre. True Grit adds a lot of sustainability. You can teleport away from the gates to flank, and you can shoot through them. A lot of options here for this Kinesa, and Eagle Eye can make it even even more bursty against this triple DPS if whoever is piloting this Kinesa, we're assuming Mitau, is running hot today. Those DPS on the other side might struggle. And it's going to be interesting because I've seen, you know, some of the best players in the world. You know, you mentioned Na'Vi running it. I've seen Mutu specifically run a Kinesa here, not successfully, and run it here successfully. So it's definitely one that takes a little bit of practice. We'll see how much Parallax Gaming has put in on it to make sure it works out. They're going to start collapsing in. Strix definitely has an easier time because in moments like that, one clean shot makes it difficult for that Maeve to do pretty much anything here. And he just gets to hold the ankle. But it's going to be Vindo taken down first, even though the headshots have been coming up big for Headed. Yeah, and Headed almost actually manages to take down FRZ. He does get traded, getting aggressive. But the patience from Parallax catches out the first person pushing. And now they can just pressure the rest of them out while getting cap time. But actually, both tanks are forward. And Outlander couldn't make it back in time. Dintic didn't realize he didn't have heals. And PS1 just pushes him right back out. Not a good angle, being able to hold this one down. Like you said, can see pretty much anywhere on the objective if he needs to, but not PS1. Going to be perfectly fine here. Shields up. So they're going to be able to get aggressive. 69 to 33 on the other side. This barrack taking a lot of damage. There goes Freeze God. He's taken down on the side. So big couple of kills. Baron no credit, but Vindo, realistically the damage that helps get rid of Krons. And it's falling apart for Parallax Gaming right at the end. 99% should start to tick over to 100. A little bit of an overtime timer going down, but... Parallax Gaming are not looking to dive in on that one, and that's going to be point number one here. One side of Fatal Ambition. Yeah, as soon as Dintic got left alone, there was he couldn't stop PS1 from repushing him. Ash has damage, but Vivian has some of the highest in the game. Not able to withstand that. Needed someone else there, but they all kind of backed up to deal with, I think, the remainders of people left. And now, Fatal Ambition have great silence here they can abuse, and this Illusory Rift, too, makes it them hard to duel into. Dintic again, left alone. At first he goes, but he does finally back up to meet him. Fatal Ambition are still going to move this cart and the Sentinels. Maybe they want to engage here on Krons. Uh, definitely looks like they're going to be able to burn down the barricade fast enough. It's just a question of whether or not they want to get the kill. Or maybe leave him in this you know, awkward spot that they have. There's going to be the Dread Serpent causing some disruption. PS1 going to get pushed against the wall. and They're going to shred through his health bar. Dintic. Credit for the kill, and as of right now, they walk away, yeah, with the two kills. Barano kind of left out to dry by the rest of his team. But it got quiet there after the Dread Serpent. I think they got exactly what they won as Parallax, which is a little bit of map control, some pressure, and now locking down Fatal Ambition, pushing them away from that payload and finding some straggling kills on the way back. And you definitely, you can be willing to aggressively zone on this map because you spawn so close to the cart. You're not really worried about, about dying and maybe letting it flood in afterwards. Plus, Parallax have the mobility to go on a more aggressive flank on the respawn too, jumping over the gates and actually staying forward with the team instead of having to take the longer pathways. So Parallax are feeling pretty comfortable here, I'd say. On the back of Midtow getting some good snipes watching that long angle and FRZ is safe enough to hold this. Finally, Vindo engaging. Can't withstand the pressure, but he peeks the strict sideline, goes down, and this is a great opening for Fatal. Yeah, Freeze God going anywhere outside of the fight is going to make it a lot easier for Fatal Ambition. A 4v5. They lose Krons as well, so a lot of their point tank pressure around the payload has disappeared. A beautiful stun from the wow. Maldamba is going to end up resulting in a kill on Davindo there. The reversal almost saved his life, but it's not going to be enough to stop this push just yet. Cool, still alive, making sure the Sonara stays full and healthy. So even though they've had some good plays so far from Parallax Gaming to stall it, that payload's still moving forward with 15 seconds left. Man, you, get, you ever feel like you had a good flank and then suddenly you get stunned and shoulder bashed within a second of you engaging? I, I think they were ready for Vindo to get aggressive <laughs> there. Fatal Ambition, they're not watching this flank. This is going to be this is gonna be the death knell on this push for them for sure with FRZ here in the back line. But the stealth from the Strix into a headshot. 
so incredible by headed to keep that covered and now the flanker that was what parallax were relying on and he's out of the picture Oh, with Headed gone, it might cause a little bit more trouble. They lose Midtow in response to 3v5 right now until the respawn comes through from Freeze to get back into the engagement. Vindo what? stays alive with low health. Gets healed up in the back line. Barino is pretty low. Maeve's sitting on top of this Andro. It's going to be two DPS kills. Makes it a lot more difficult to remain standing or nearby as it feels the way for the Inara. Knocked off of the objective pretty solidly. So it's going to be another point here, ticked up for Parallax Gaming as they tie it up. But that was maybe a little closer for comfort for them, right? I mean, it got unnecessarily far for that payload there, which I think was a brilliant play from Fatal Ambition. Yeah, I'd agree. And, and FRZ, him getting caught out on the flank really kind of strained them a lot, just kind of having to live off their sustain. But... One thing you have to think about whenever you're pushing Bazaar, not only do you have to watch that gate at the start of the push, but once you get a few picks, you have to watch that balcony. They had the gate covered with Headed being able to peel for himself, but they didn't have the balcony covered on the respawns, and that's really what let FRZ just walk in and triple kill their backline, just not watching that respawn potential. Smart beginning of this fight right now. My Fatal Ambition with Headed very far away. Dintic didn't see it coming and has to disengage already. Fatal Ambition, total point control. Yeah, Dintic got incredibly low there. He's healed up since then, but the pressure has been mounting on top of Parallax Gaming. Judd Serpent into the back line. Looks like it's going to connect on one, but maybe not enough to get the pressure that Freeze God wanted. So that Judd Serpent opens up a lot, but it's not going to be able to, to solidify any kills just yet. And since it's 60% to 9 now on the other side. They get rid of Barano. So maybe Parallax Gaming grabs some control, especially with those kills coming up. They might have given up maybe too much in the process just to try and get here. Yeah, and they also gave up the flashbang onto Dintic's dead body. I, I'm not sure what, what Headed was considering with that. That's the second flash in a I mean, row. You gotta that... stop those dead guys from seeing <laughs> I mean, it's the zombie. When the zombies rise up, he's definitely making sure that they'll have exactly what they need in terms of defense. <laughs> but right now, Parallax are super forward. Headed doesn't have anything to peel for himself. With Dintic and FRZ diving again, that waste might, might end up biting them. Headed goes down immediately. Yeah, it's going to make it a 4v5. There's no chance for him to get back in any meaningful amount of time as he's looking to respawn. Not PS1 looking for the damage. The stun flies just narrowly beside him, but it's not going to be able to get a hit. Spindo jumped up into the air. They're just looking for the trades they need. That's going to be the kill that they need to open it up. Mittau taken down. Doing a little bit of a dance here. Vivian going down. Now Barino kind of standing lonely on the objective, but still finding a lot of damage in a 4v4. Dintic stayed alive throughout all this. Dome Shield goes down, and that's going to be able to help Krons hold on to this one. Good shots all around. Unfortunately for Barino, I think that means his troubles are going to start rising up. The healing has just been monumental. This Maldamba keeping Krons alive has been putting so much work into it, but the fact that Barino is still going, finally taken down there at the end, it's going to be a couple of kills coming out for Parallax. It should get them the point, but now PS1 does his best. But unfortunately, it's not enough this time around. And even though Headed has made his way back into it, it's not enough for a 1v3. And that'll be Parallax Game and taking the point. Kadesa on the respawn was is almost impossible for Fatal Ambition to beat unless they're already waiting for it. They don't have an off tank. They only have this Androxus to be aggressive potentially, and then two back lines. Midtown comes back from the respawn. Suddenly, their team that wants to be on their side of the map is thinking, oh, how do I get anywhere else? But look at the size of the crash from Barino, killing two. Mitsao has to do a lot to keep this fight in their hands. It's too much pressure, maybe, for Mitsao to, to overcome on his own, especially oh. with Kron's going down. This feels like a, you know, fall back and, and, and wait patiently kind of fight for me as the, the kills come through here for Fatal Ambition. And that's the, the question, you know, we, we've seen this happen somewhat consistently, but not enough that I could say that Parallax Gaming are in any danger, especially with Dintic using the Assert Dominance here. It's maybe not opening any doors, but sure is making sure they don't lose any ground here. And moments like that, I mean, what do Fatal Ambition need to focus on? Who do they need to get rid of to just stop Parallax? They need to find a way to isolate the flankers from Dintic, because they can't let that dive happen fully. They did a decent job of it there. They push out FRZ, they kill Dintic. That's it. The aggressive line has to be slowed down. Or, as long as the Sir Dominance is up, maybe have the backlines play on top of each other to make it a 2v2 instead of that 2 on 1. All things they could do, and all things I think they've already done a little bit, but you can't do it all the time. The Assert Dominance threat is always going to be there. Sometimes you're just not going to out-trade the damage. This Dread Serpent is almost impossible. Yeah. Yo, just a one-for-one one trade for Fatal. 
Well, they're looking for a couple more kills. They lose Dintic in the process. Vindo's going to have that reversal available, and it's enough to save his life as he dashes on out of there. Just barely. Long range daggers again from Freeze God this time around. They look good. Unfortunately, they're not finding anything in terms of kills, but hey, at least he looks flashy in the process. His 30 seconds are going to be left here. Losing Mittau as well right here. And this corner is notoriously difficult to kind of get the U-turn around on the push. It seems like Parallax Gaming are, are feeling that in full force. Dome Shield available, Midnight available, Headhunter all up. But is it worth using any of them to try and get here and find this control back just to find a conversion? This is the part This is the part of the game where you slow down on using ultimates. Because if you do drop it here, then you won't have a chance to... You might get snowballed there in the end, but they do use the Midnight, which is countered by the Accursed Arm. They gotta hope that first pick is enough with no healing on the other side, but the health on Parallax isn't looking too great. And a great quick scope by Headed keeps things even more on their side. Well, it's a two for one, make that three for one now as Vindo continues finding this Androxus. And you had called it as a good pick for Parallax to maybe try and, and scoop up. A Fatal Ambition have showcased exactly what it can do on this map, maybe why it would have been nice for Parallax to be able to grab that instead of something like the Knessa. But as of now, 6-6-10, six, six, and ten. Slash line, maybe not that impressive. Honestly, even damage isn't that impressive. He's sitting third to the bottom, just above the healers. And maybe it's not screaming out as loudly as you would like, but I feel like Vindo has been essential to shutting down Parallax Gaming's push. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I think that they're just keeping him kind of holding back, protecting his backline, and I just said they need to make unfair fights happen when they dive, either by isolating one with early damage or by having people stacked up. Instead of forcing the stack up, they're just having Vindo kind of sit in the middle. As soon as someone gets aggressive, now he's triple dashing to his own backline just to make it even, N not let that be a 2v1, maybe make it a, a 3v2 if his healer's there too. Fatal Ambition, though, that's not what they wanted to do this mid. Super early aggression by Barino and even Walden Dinte. Now, I've not seen many Anaras run this deep. That's going to be a two-man stun from the Seismic Crash. A lockdown enough to get rid of Freeze God Dintic. Both eliminated here, and the other three members, well, they're going to be sitting back, locked away from Parallax. So it's a lot of early control and, and solid control at that here for Fatal Ambition. 63 and still rising compared to Parallax Gaming's nothing on the point. And it doesn't look like anybody's going to even be close. Barrick might be able to make a good mad dash in, but it's actually going to be Dintic who gets the touch. Costs him his life in the process, so it's a 4v5. 4v4 is headed, goes down here. Kranz gets back in, gets the touch. The no dome shield available is going to get taken down shortly thereafter. And this just feels like Parallax Gaming maybe stalling more than anything. It's not giving them enough room to take control back. 99 to 3. Just a few seconds, should be ticking over to that 100, although a couple of kills starting to run red. Parallax Gaming have moved Dintic back in. They've actually wrestled control right away from Fatal Ambition. And he did manage to get the Assert Dominance back too, so if the rest of the team can stay alive during this and let Dintic do pressure in the back, it could help, but Vindo in a great position all over this barrack. Midtown's waiting to peel and everything's coming up Parallax. Oh, that's going to be a couple of good shots. Strix, a lot of pressure on him to make this one work. But he's got to find the angles he needs. There's one good clip onto the Maeve. Unfortunately, not PS1 goes down. That was his shield that was living in front of him. And now Maeve finding the angle. No healer. Your tank is zoned out. And it's 99. It's a big number to surmount here for Parallax. But they found the kills. They turned it around when they needed to. And now, like you said, coming up red all the time. Parallax Gaming take the point and find themselves potentially being able to convert this one for a win. What a what a retake by them, honestly. And I, I thought things were dire. Dintic shoulder bashed in at 98% and just died at 99. That's how much damage is on the side of Fatal Ambition. And yet Parallax were able to one by one touch, get off, and stay alive constantly through that. Being able to play their damage reduction, play Damba's buff tealing, really let them turn that around. Won't be able to flip this around, though, with that good wall by Barino. And I think Freeze is going to follow up as well. So Fatal Ambition just slowly bully out the rest of Parallax. Well, Cursed Arm, Flashbang at 96%. Seismic Crash available, so a lot of things to use potentially defensively here for Fatal Ambition. But you have to look at what Parallax is going to be able to bring to this. All you need is one nice opening kill. One good shot, unfortunately, right there. Just a narrow miss from Mittau to maybe find that nice opener for the team. Angle. They have a minute and a half left. They're holding some interesting angles. They do force out Vindo, but he stays alive. 
on that Androxus, and that's gonna be an early dome shield just to try and wrestle back control of the payload. It was good for forcing out Burrito, especially with FRZ where he is. It's gonna have to wrap even further to the side. This is a good isolation they've done to Vindo, but they can't chase because of the gates. But Burrito overstays his welcome gore. And that's gonna be one kill, two kills ticked up here for Parallax Gaming. The tank and the flank all eliminated. And unfortunately for Vivian, she's just in the wrong place at this time. She's going to be able to buy a couple, maybe a couple of seconds of stall, but that's going to be another staggered kill. Seven seconds out from the rest of the team, who as of right now, Fatal Ambition are all just kind of laying in wait inside their base. Regroup, especially with their fifth member respawning here, come out ready for the defense. Dread Serpent available, Sir Dominance available, and that Headhunter, so crits whenever they need them from Mittal, just laying in wait when the fight starts. It's risky if they want to spend these ultimates potentially, and I'm glad they're watching the back. They know how they held on their last defense, so watching the same exact situations. Good damage at early and actually killing Vivian. Forces an ult out from Fatal Ambition. Parallax finally spend the Dread Serpent. And that's going to be a nice one on the head, but no follow-up. They don't get the kill, so he's at 1,000 health right now. Uncomfortable, but not taken out. Vindo gets the first kill on the mid -tow. Is making it a lot easier to be able to get aggressive. Dentic finally gets into the back line and gets rid of that pesky sniper. The payload inching ever so closer. But overtime's gonna be ticked through right here. Not PS1 taking a lot of damage. The shield goes up, but Dentic is just looking to burn through. The assert dominance is already gone. They don't have anything to stall this out. The kills are coming up, but they don't have enough pressure. Even though the snipers can trade out, we're looking at a 3-3. Fatal Ambition are still in it, down, but not quite out here. As Parallax used a lot of their ults to find that. Well, unfortunately, not conversion. Yeah, once both snipers were out of the fight and it was down to just a, a paladin's brawl on the objective, the team with the respawn advantage is going to win that. Midtown's going to take so much longer to come back. He was there at the very last second, but the tanks had already bled each other out by then. Fatal Ambition are going to have more damage respawning, but what else are left for them to, to do this 3-3 fight? Parallax used a lot, but they have a lot more value in theirs, I think, and... Headed, only, the only thing they really have is the flashbang from Headed. We've seen him, him struggle, I think, to find some value with it outside of one or two solid ones across this map, so tough to rely on that. Ying will get a loser rift rather quickly, but an aggressive early midnight from Parallax could make it impossible for Fatal Ambition to get set up a at all. Well, something that stood out to me that I haven't seen particularly a lot of was that Runic Ammunition card for Vivian. If we get the chance, I'd love to pick your brain on it, but as of right now... It's the high stress. Whoever gets this first pick will make a big difference. Mittal finds the shot on the head, and he took his eyes off that Kinesa for a second, and it's going to end up coming up red. Two for one trade so far. Freeze God gets eliminated for getting a little overzealous, but it doesn't matter. Not PS1 traded out for it. Barano, kind of the last man standing on top of this objective. And well, hey, Anara's tanky, especially with a Ying trying to keep her topped off, but it's only going to buy them a little bit of time. 33 to 9% in rising. This Parallax rest back control there. Barrett, Dome Shield available, Dread Serpent on the up and coming in terms of ult. Same thing there with the Assert Dominance. That's a lot of control, Kresnik. And unfortunately, I, I don't know what Fatal Ambition can do to, to get back into this. I think it's dependent on how big the Accursed Arm is. And I was going to say also the Illusory Rift, but FRZ just all on top of them. No healing means Barino is basically just a timer. How long can he live once he touches the objective? I don't think Cool's going to be back anytime to make this fight work. Oh, that Accursed Arm didn't get to come out there before Vindo goes down. That's an unfortunate death. Headed trades out the sniper kills onto Mittau. So maybe a little bit more pressure onto the point. That's going to be that's a lot of damage onto this Vivian. And, well, not PS1. Chase down. You've got Dintic. You've got Kranz. You've got Freeze God. The holy trifecta here for Parallax Gaming, keeping things rolling and alive. They capture that mid, and they take map number two. It takes them a little while to get there because of the nature of Bizarre. But I think they, they close it out in a way that they needed to. A lot of slippery fights at the very beginning, but and they seem to figure out Fatal Ambition by the end. Yeah, I would say. And they, they knew that Fatal was going to be playing a little bit more defensive, so they took their time to, to take the space at the start of the mid. As soon as Fatal were, like, peeking out the door, saying, all right, I think, are they are they here? Are they, are they going to push? Then they engaged immediately, and that was just great by them. They knew exactly how Fatal were going to react, and they counted it from the start. All right. Uh, this might just me be. If that did not feel like a 23, 13, and 9 game from Freeze God, maybe they just happened and it was like, you know, 3 and 1 every single time. It just does not feel like that much came through. 101,000 damage from him, 134, and top damage goes to Mittau, though. But, you know, now is actually the perfect time 
Vivian was able to do 112,000 damage. She had a, a good amount of control. Of course, as I start talking about her, she's the first death of the highlight reel. But th there was a runic ammunition card. It was a 25% yes. lifesteal. That's something I typically see. Did that have any merit going into this map? Or do you think maybe that was some of the, the trouble that Fatal Ambition were facing? It's a more consistent card for anti-dive. I know Scapegoat is usually kind of the fallback for Vivian's. Make 30% to 40% of your damage go into your shield. But Runic Ammunition is solid for keeping yourself alive more consistently. If you don't have your shield up, suddenly you're so much squishier, whereas at least Runic Ammunition is consistent. Yeah. Uh, throughout the game, you're always going to be getting that little bit of sustain buff. It ended up not really helping him too much, but I think that's just the nature of being one person getting dove by an Ash and a Maeve <laughs> all game. Yeah, unfortunately, I think that was what Parallax Gaming were maybe not preparing for specifically. They didn't think, yes, this is the card he's going to run in his loadout. <laughs> But they knew who they wanted to dive in on. And even though I think the Andrew was a good steal, I think the snipers were going back and forth. Unfortunately, it did seem to fall apart there. And now Parallax Gaming find themselves up to zero. I mean, this was the question kind of coming into today. If, you know, Fatal Ambition could make Parallax look, you know, at least worse for wear. And that one goes 3-3. Are there any other maps maybe that come to your mind to try and control Parallax and maybe take something away from them? Hard to, hard to say. Maybe Splitstone, you can try to slow the game down there, control that high ground, and really brawl down on them. But otherwise, I think they've played this game enough to almost have nothing that they're weak on. <laughs> oh, we'll have to see if there is anything that they're weak on in the future as we go forward. We're going to take a quick break before we get to map number three. So stay tuned to see what happens. Well, the time is nigh as we come back here into Brazil. And welcome back, everyone. Hope you got your drinks and snacks sorted because it is time to see whether or not Fatal Ambition can put Parallax Gaming up against the wall, or if Parallax Gaming are still the powerhouse that they've proven themselves to be in Brazil. Once again, my name is Gormizer, and joining me, uh, well, still on this set, is Kresnik. And, you know, you were talking about it. There's a lot of maps that are still in the pool, so I don't think we can narrow it down until we get to see what it is. Splitstone Quarry, which I actually think you called out as the map to slow it down here. So maybe the perfect prediction coach mind coming into play how, do, how does Fatal Ambition slow it down? How do they stop it here on Splitstone? They, it's just easier to defend on this map than most of the others. Only other one I, I thought of during the break and was kind of hitting myself for, but I guess I'm glad I didn't say it now, was Fish Market. But Splitstone, we know how strong <laughs> that defensive hold can be, sitting on the high ground, spamming down. It's also great for hit scans, great for snipers. It's just good for what they want to be doing. The only thing they really have to be sure of is don't, don't let that Bomb King through inside of Quarry. If you let them have quarry control and it's FRZ on Bomb King in there, you're really not going to be able to break through. Yes, what we saw earlier, Bomb King Ash is pretty good on this map, and Parallax Gaming seemed to like running Ash. Dintic has picked it up now, so I think it's something you could potentially expect. They get rid of the Vivian, Eevee on the other side, and the Eevee is the conversation I think I focus on. It's not surprising to see teams ban Eevee out when you're up against someone like Freeze God. In fact, it's probably one of the easiest bans that you've made outside of potentially a Bomb King or like that of the Maeve. But Fatal Ambition are one of those teams that, as you mentioned, is kind of a mix of you know console players, PC players <laughs> here in this crossplay league. And so do you think that there's a little bit of the, the Eevee ban coming through more to kind of save them from having to deal with it than anything? Or, or is this really a target ban That's against so Parallax specifically? I, I think it's barely a target ban against Parallax. I think it really is just for the, the console players playing against them. Uh, just look at Sanguine. We, we know how, how good Cool and Gogurt are. We know how good Headed and Not PS1 are here. Sanguine are banning Eevee every single game, regardless of sure. what team that they're going up against. So I think it's almost exclusively to deny th this Eevee from playing against their, their console players who, who might struggle against potentially the quick high movement, blinking back and forth, Grumpy tough to boy. potentially track. Looking at this, I, I just I just got stopped for a second because I just saw what Parallax got, and I'm I'm terrified if I'm playing against Mitau Strix and FRC's Bomb King on a map like this. Well, hey, there's an IO on the other side, but uh, I think it's time to see if Mitau can channel his inner Prosper logic, which I think is going to be my new barrier of entry for Splitstone Quarry Strixes, <laughs> at least for a little while here because of how insane that was earlier. And Freeze God's Bomb King kind of spoke for itself in game one today. So a lot of control, pretty much control of both areas that you want, realistically, on Splitstone Quarry. Bomb King gives you the bleachers. Strix gives you everywhere else. So now you've got the control you need. Andro 
maybe to dive into the background. Barrick's going to be able to stand up front, but is Fatal Ambition cooking something that you think is going to be able to take down these picks? I, they have to draft fully for Lava Lava at this point. And look at what Parallax has. Strix Bomb King. Strix owns the outside, looking over Quarry. BK owns the inside. At this point, all you have, you only have really a chance to win Lava, so getting that Andro early was great. But the buck response from Parallax, I think, is perfect. Who do you want to be just in the way of Lava, stopping you from going through, just blocking those two doors? It's Buck. You want someone who will just clap his hands together, say, nope, I'm full health now, goodbye, fly away. <laughs> it, it, he's the perfect one to slow them down. And them having to get this Ying for more sustain, they just want a way for this Andro to be able to out heal or outlive this Buck. Uh, Buck, as you said, perfect for blocking things. Shoulder width, the size of the doors, can't get past him. Not easily, <laughs> shotgun. It hurts, man. If you get hit in the head with one Buck shotgun blast, especially, well, I was going to say, with a Luminary boosting it, although they didn't have the Genos at the time, I think this is a very deadly composition from Parallax. But the Kinesa on the other side. Now, we've seen how this works. You, you mentioned kind of focusing in on Lava. Does the Andro kinesa combo get to compete with maybe the Buck Strix in controlling, like, Lava and, and over the point? Yeah, they're going to have to, but Kinesa might end up getting split trying to shoot the people on the objective fighting the IO. It's going to really come down to who, I think, wins the inside and lets FRZ play in that area in complete safety. I'm enjoying the symphony that we're given as we jump in here to Splitstone Quarry, but could be the last map in Brazil. A lot of pressure on the Fatal Ambition to try and make this one work, just because, well, as we've seen in the past, it is not quite the end-all, be-all. It is very difficult to take down Parallax Gaming. And as of right now, we've given them some signature picks. Freeze God. Maybe the scariest of them all who's going to be bringing, you know, the Bomb King. Royal mm -hmm. Subjects with a Luminary boost behind it. Anything you see standing out talents-wise, item-wise, that, that could maybe help deal with this. Uh, the, I like the Haven coming out from Headed and from Cool. Knowing that you're against Genos, you don't really need as much Cauterize, so get a little bit more sustain, but Haven won't help you against FRZ on this BK. Just all oh, shredding through three people backing out of Quarry. Immediately, this area is completely won for them, almost topping himself into the spinners if he didn't Ooh. hit that wall, but he's just forcing them into Mittau's sightline. And I love this. You force him out, Mittau takes down two, Dintic gets up another. Freeze God makes sure that he gets a little bit of the credit, and that's a quick four-man wipe. The only person still alive is Headed. That's because he was the one furthest away from the fight, safest to be able to get out of there. Now the full press defense comes through. Headed gets a kill onto Mittau. But that's 75% and still rising for Parallax Gaming. And well, it's going to take a lot to try and get back. You have to go through a Void Grip, a Bomb King, a Buck, and now that Sniper who has returned. It's a difficult order, and it seems like Fatal Ambition aren't quite ready to answer. They're going to get some overtime here as Marino touches down, but no healing behind him. Makes it a lot easier. Freescon's going for the King Bomb immediately on point capture, just making sure they have as much zone as possible. And they've got this payload rolling. Hey, if you got it, use it. If you if you did that much damage and you got a King Bomb already, I'm spending it. I don't care how bad it is. I'll walk right into a, a Terminus with Reanimate to, to just show that off. Now, actually, the aggression from Kranz doesn't save FRZ, but could trade a kill. He doesn't want to stay, but he is enabling his buck, Ooh. and a great wall into Vindo might get them something else. Well, Vindo's going to be at least be able to get a little bit of a return kill. Actually, two here as Buck. Wow. Uh, I think an unfortunate reload seems to have come up there for Dentic, so it's not going to be able to find the kills they needed. What started off an, a, a literally explosive start to the payload push. So far, slowed down. And, you know, Bomb King is very great at fighting under bleachers, even in this little house because it's close quarters. But he seems to be slowing down and suffering a little bit in terms of trying to control the point. Well, I say that, and he gets rid of the healer. Yeah, one of the two here for Fatal Ambition is causing some, some trouble. Has the accursed arm on the other side. A couple of volts to maybe Ooh. slow it down, but good headshots and good kills, good damage means the payload's moving once again. Yeah, they can keep this snowballed a little bit forward. And I, I'm not sure what not PS1 was thinking, being up top in that upper cabin area against three people that could potentially go up there. Gonna kind of open up some room, him going down, but headed, winning that duel. Headhunter now coming out as well. Two ultimates popped, but everyone's just hiding. What can they find? Well, the Accursed Arm, not gonna be able to find the kill onto the Bomb King, unfortunately, there for Fiendo. And Kranz is oh, gonna get saved by the bell there. That Bomb King that didn't get eliminated earlier comes back to bite Fiendo right behind. Barino goes down as well, and this last corner, looking to get broken, is now a 5v3. 
the Andro coming up. A couple of volts available for Fatal Ambition, but they've got to figure out if they want to, you know, continue this aggression, how hard they want to continue that aggression. So far, it's a kill on an not PS1, almost a kill onto the Knesset, but it, it doesn't matter. They just go ahead and walk it in. Yeah, they walk straight through. They can't really stop them with with the tanks that they have, I think, with Io getting pressured out too hard. As soon as they kill that, that Luna, they really can't keep things slowed down. Before we got into this, one thing I was going to say at the start of the game was, oh, well, we get to really see how much Genos' range nerf is hurting him because he's going to have to play a lot less safe. Doesn't matter. He's under no pressure. Andro is just dealing with Buck, trying to keep Dintic from doing whatever he wants in the back. And Outlander is just safe, just sits outside of the sniper sight line. The only thing he has to worry about is, what, an occasional Shattered Illusion coming around the corner just to chip him for 500? He's, he's, he's living the easy life, and FRZ and Dintic are just blocking everybody from getting onto anyone in their back line. And in a similar manner to what they did earlier, this time around three bulldozers, but still enough to deal with Luna if she gets put up here. And so, a couple of good opening shots. A lot of the control already over there in favor of Freeze God. Kill onto Cool, and that's going to cause a lot of distress for them. A beautiful flashbang triple god wow. for Freeze God as he's going to continue running through. I almost said triple god. Now it's a quadra god as he comes through. He keeps <laughs> finding kills in Freeze God here. And hey, that's just full on aggression. You know, honestly, Gore, I know that was a, a misspoke, misspeak, but uh, I don't think you're wrong. I honestly no, I, don't. It's pretty it's accurate for him. Yeah, he's really keeping this locked down. Another King Mom to control this upper area. No one's really here, but they're just scared. They have to back up, and Headed's too distracted. Stands right in the time and space. Uh, that's 78%, 81 as it goes up. Three more kills. Unfortunately, Barano tasked with the, uh, well, the unfortunate task of being the body that has to touch the objective. Doesn't even get to make it there. Same thing for Cool. And this was the, I mean, this was the map to slow it down, Kresnik. That's what we were talking about. This is the map to try and stop Parallax Gaming. And now they're up 3-0. No ults on the board just now, so maybe there's your merits. But they have two minutes to push this forward, and they just got two more kills picked up as they uh, get a little bit of aggression pushed on to Fatal Ambition. This was the map to slow down Parallax, and then they gave FRZBK and Midtown Strix. So I, I guess maybe their plan was to lull them into a false sense of security and outdraft them after. But it, it seems like they just they can't slow them down. FRZ in a great angle. People are above him, but unable to really drop and deal with them because they have to walk into the sight lines on the other side. That's that beautiful, beautiful Archangel that's looking over him, which is the sniper, making sure things come forward. Still having to get back into the battle, but you also have Dintic kind of hanging out there. I don't want to fight Bomb King or anyone with a shotgun in close range quarters, and that's what Parallax Gaming have. This payload looking to try and come around this last bend right here. A little bit before it can get converted, but Freeze God opens up with a kill onto the barrack. Long range bombs look to come through, but that's an accursed arm return, and Midtail gets burned down. It's a 4v4 with a respawn advantage there for Fatal Ambition. They get rid of the Andrew. That payload hasn't budged in a few seconds. Yeah, they've been able to contest it for a while. The Seismic Crash actually misses, and Barino has to slow down. He's fighting people that no one else can really help them with. Hmm. Begone whiffs. Barino, again, a little bit too forward, getting chunked down. Finally gets healed, but he's under a lot of pressure from both sides. Yeah, Dentic does get eliminated, which maybe makes it a little easier, at least on the Sniper. Now Vindo can get aggressive, and that's exactly what he's going to look to do. Unfortunately for him, there's too much aggression from all angles. King Bomb channeled up, going to be rolling through. Where does he want to go with it? It looks like it's going to be on to Barano, but the Sniper shot's just too strong. Not PS1 even getting credit for a couple of those kills on this Ying. And that slows down. Doesn't fully stop Parallax Gaming, but it, it's going to take a lot to get back in time, with overtime, and try to close out this gap that they've already been struggling to deal with. Depends on how split, honestly, the Fatal Ambition go, because like, Barino and Vindo just keep peeking a little bit too far and getting chipped down. Finally, Barino is able to disengage to his team. Vindo escapes as well, so they have a chance, especially with this early damage on the Inara. You have to use the Headhunter to get even more, and they're actually contesting in complete safety. Barino has to back up, or he's going to leave the door open for his team. That's going to be the opening kills. Krons goes down on one side, but they lose the healer on the other. Ten seconds before you have that Ying available, but you still have Io kind of keeping up as the backup overtime. Very narrowly going down there. Good shots from Dintic. Opens up a kill, and that's going to be Buck Wild. He's getting aggressive. He wants the kill. He wants the conversion. Unfortunately, that barricade is doing a lot of work in terms of saving him. And that's going to be Barano at half health, but that's where it stops headed. Going to be able to find a couple of kills to close that one out. Fatal Ambition. 
stop the bleeding as of right now, but they haven't fully cauterized this wound that is going for them. They still have a lot of work to do to turn this one around. You know, I feel like I haven't noticed Mitao dying this much. I was just looking at Headed. Headed is 9-1. and one. Mitao's died seven times, almost three more wow. on the average on the rest of his team. I think that's just on these pushes, he's getting a little too forward or just losing outright these fights against Headed. I think the the headhunters that are coming out from him are really trying to turn things against him. Plus, Mitao not having full cauterize doesn't nullify the true grit in Headed's build as much as it would have otherwise. So he's just siphoning health from Mitao. And even against the Luminary, getting a solid advantage in these sniper duels. Well, normally, that's the advantage he typically gets, which is that first stealth shot. But unfortunately, he eats just the same one right back. But it has been Freeze God that's controlling the very beginning of these fights. Couple of opening bombs, and hey, they might not be under bleachers, but it doesn't matter. Dintic, Freeze God still get the kills. Verano again. Unfortunately, the sacrificial lamb this time around, and well, it's not the sniper battle that's being won. It's every other fight that gets controlled here in Parallax Gaming, or once again on the point. An aggressive zone here too. They just slowed them down. Mitau hit, I think, some pressure on the people trying to leave lava, so they cut through the little middle area, the saw room, and they just couldn't get anywhere further. Walked straight into FRZ. That's exactly what Parallax wants. They want them to walk into this King Bomb too, but the Headhunter is going to stop them from getting any, any more forward with it. Well, it's going to be 81, still rising as Parallax control the objective. Mitao getting aggressive, maybe too aggressive as we've seen in the past, but he finds a good yeah. shot onto Vindo, takes him down, one onto Headed, misses the second, so hasn't eliminated that sniper just yet, but the threat has been thwarted as they are forced to fall back. Unfortunately, that looks like all the pressure Fatal Ambition could put on the point. Parallax Gaming walk away with the win 3-0 in the set 4-1 on splitstone quarry they slow it down a little bit there at the end kresnik but they, they just didn't have enough on the side of fatal ambition to fully stop parallax gaming yeah fatal definitely didn't hand it to him i don't think i think that the start of their drafts were pretty solid but they just kept they were giving comfort to parallax because they were prioritizing these ROM bans, the Mave bans. I, I know they have to ban the EV, but I think that the flexible ban that was going in the other slot wasn't helping them. They yeah. couldn't give FRZ BK again on a map where if they're playing, if you're playing IO, you have to own the inside, and you can't win the inside against someone on BK. I mean, he was what seventeen and three on, on Jagfall, sixteen and three. Yep on Splitstone. And there's a reason I said that while it seems like a, a phenomenal slash line for literally anybody, it's just another day on Bomb King for Freeze God. He does not blink at something as well as he does on this one because he's just so comfortable with it. Unfortunately, that opening control, even around the, you know some of the payload pushes like this, really was what, what sealed the deal for Fatal Ambition. I mean, they couldn't fight uh, in bleaches around the mid, and they couldn't fight around that last corner on the push either. Yeah, and look at this. Oh, the stone shield was something I was worried about initially. They went forward with it. Wait, did he get everybody here? In this, oh, this was the, sorry, this wasn't the last fight. This was just another fight that went poorly. But I didn't realize Barino domed in the same spot twice. And it didn't work for the team either times. Just never really willing to get aggressive enough with it and let the distraction actually run its course. You know, I was on the fence, I think, originally. Bomb King makes sense. We've seen it do well on this map. Strix? Easy peasy. It fits perfectly on this map. I was on the fence about the buck coming into today and specifically seeing what it could accomplish. And I think he proved with flying colors what you could see out of that. Was that more or less what you wanted to see out of that draft coming into it? I mean, another 3 0 win for Parallax kind of proves that I think they could pick whatever they want and still make it work. Yeah, I would agree. I think the buck did exactly what it needed to. The mobility, the ability to, to survive a lot of pressure. He's basically a dive tank. At this point, if you play him right in Dintic, someone who's played a lot of tank, played a lot of DPS, knows exactly how to get the most out of them. Uh, as you can see, Carnage Gaming, Balamansa, the other teams in Brazil will be playing over the next couple of days. So make sure you, you're tuned. I think Friday's at 2 p.m., Saturday's at 3 p.m. to be able to see yes. all of the other matchups that are listed there as offline. But Kresnik, I mean, otherwise for Brazil, is, is there anything that maybe stands out to you? Is, has anyone maybe proven themselves to be the kryptonite to Parallax Gaming? Or are we looking more towards the bottom to see who can stay in in relegations right now? I think Fatal Ambition are kind of looking at the clear fourth, and they're able to take some pressure onto Parallax in control as we go into these these later tournaments, maybe 
future splits of the PPC, I think we'll see in control doing a little bit better. Once they figure out how to play against Parallax without IO, they have really pushed him to the limit almost every single time. I'm excited to see what InControl have to offer. Again, watch those over the next couple of days. But as of right now, and for the rest of the day, North America is still to come. Flashpoint going up against Snap, and you won't want to miss it, so stay tuned.